living in the light. Romans chapter 13, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. In today's lesson, the Apostle Paul is trying to make the point with these Roman Christians that of the many laws they try to keep, if they can just keep one, it will cover all these others. What is that one law that will cover all other laws? You will see for yourselves in the scriptures we're about to read. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Well, here we have it. The law that fulfills all the other laws. Love others. Paul says, let no other debt remain except the continuing debt to love one another. Now, it's not a lesson on getting out of debt. Paul is just uses this as a comparison to highlight that love for others should never end. You should treat it like an unpaid debt, keeping it alive always. We can never repay the debt of love that God poured out on us. We must keep loving others, and that will cover all the other laws. Next, Paul is going to list some of these Old Testament laws. Actually, they're part of the Ten Commandments. I'm not sure why Paul selected these four out of the Ten Commandments. Again, it's just maybe used for a comparison. Paul said the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be, are all summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Paul lists four commandments and then says, and whatever command there may be. So Paul is really saying that there is not a greater commandment than this. That you love your neighbor as yourself. Paul first said, whoever loves others fulfilled all the laws. But then in the very next verse, he goes just a little deeper when he says, love your neighbor as yourself. I wonder what Jesus would have said. Seems like he said something similar to this in Matthew chapter 22. One of the Jewish experts in the law asked, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now they ask that question trying to trap him or trick him. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Paul understood what Jesus was talking about when he said that all the laws hang on these two commandments. That is why Paul is saying to leave no debts except for loving your neighbors as yourself. You, you never pay that up. You never reach that point where you say, I'm done loving my neighbors. It's an open debt, always. We should always have an open debt because we should never stop following this commandment. Paul said, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Paul says, loving your neighbor will never cause them harm. However, not all neighbors will be receptive of your love for them. Again, he says that love is the fulfillment of the law. Before we move on to the next verses, I, I want us to stop and talk about the Ten Commandments that, that Paul talked about earlier. I discovered something about the Ten Commandments that I never knew before, and I wanted to share this with you. 
First, let's read them in Exodus 20 from the King James. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's number one. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon their children and to the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. Pretty long statement there for number two. We're going to come back to that. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Number three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I'm going to skip and read the red, speed this along. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He said, six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. And then number five is honor thy father and thy mother. Six says thou shalt not kill. Seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Eight, thou shalt not steal. Nine, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And ten, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his maid, manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is in thy neighbor's possessions. Now then, these same to Ten Commandments are found in Deuteronomy 5. I won't read them since they're the same as those in Exodus. They, they really didn't change anything. But let's look at some images used to display the Ten Commandments. They have been shortened, but they're still the same. Or then are they? I will show you two sets of the Ten Commandments. And I want you to see if there's any differences between the first set and the second set. Here is the first set. Let me give you a moment just to kind of scan down there and see if you see anything that's not what we've already read. I think you'll find it okay. Yet here's another set. And actually there is something different on this set than from the first set. Now, some of you may have spotted the differences in the two sets and others may not. So to make it easier, I'm going to take the first tablet of each of the two sets and put them side by side and then see if you can notice anything different. Boy, I miss not being in the classroom. I, I, I would love to be in there so we could have a discussion about this. I hate it being one sided. Now, here they are, the two that I showed you before. It's uh, the first five. It's on each one. But something's not right. Something's different. Let's help you out. Let's look at one and two. And one and two. The one on the left, I'm the Lord your God. You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him and only him you serve. And number two says, you shall not take the name of your Lord God in vain. When you look at the one on the right, number two says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. It does not appear on the one on the left. Interesting. Well, if they took one out, what happened? Here's the other side, six through ten. And let's see what we can spot here. Nine and ten both say do not covet. And this one says, 10 is, thou shalt not covet. So the one on the left, it looked like they took out number two, and they went down to number 10, and they split it and made two of them there. Interesting. Before. I'd never known this before, so I did some research and found this to be a debated topic. The Ten Commandments with the second commandment re removed is the one that most Catholics use. 
Uh, I don't know if all of them or just some of them. I'm, I'm not well up to date on that. In order not to be disrespectful to the Catholic religion, I, I want to speak for both sides as they try to explain this removal of the second commandment, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. It was not until the 4th century AD that this confusion even began to exist. At that time, Augustine, the Catholic bishop of Hippo in North Africa, devised a new way of presenting the Ten Commandments in order to allow the use of images and statues in religious worship. He dropped the second commandment altogether, divided the tenth into two commandments, bringing the number of commandments back to ten. Now, in respect to the Catholics, let's see their version of why these commandments were changed. It seems that the Catholics felt that the commandments one and two were really the same and 10 needed to be divided into two. So by eliminating number two and splitting 10 or two, 10 to two commandments, there would still be 10 commandments. The Catholics refer to what Paul said about the commandments, to love your neighbor as yourself fulfills all the laws. Therefore, some of the Catholics support the idea that, idea that the 10 commandments are no longer necessary just the commandment to love. Jesus said to love your God, and that is the number one commandment, and number two was to love your neighbor as yourself. So that's why they're saying that these are the two most important, not the ten. Now you can see reasoning on both sides as to why the Catholics have a different set of ten commandments. But remember what Paul said when Jesus Loving God and loving your neighbor is the first and the second most important commandments. And if you obey these two, you will be obeying all of the other Ten Commandments. So maybe it's not such a big issue after all. Now we come to verse 11 where Paul changes the subject just a little. He begins to warn these Roman Christians that the end of time is near and they need to be ready by living a clean Christian life. Paul went on to say, and do this, understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Paul said to do this, loving God, loving your neighbor, for the time is short. He is saying that the end is nearer than when we first believed. Well, that would be true. Paul believed that the return of Jesus could be any day, and he's still correct. It could be any day. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put under the armor Put on the armor of light. Here Paul refers to the night as to the current dark world we live in today. And he says to put away all the deeds of the darkness. It is time to put on the armor of light, meaning the light from above. We need to be living our lives as though we believe Jesus is returning today. Paul went on to say, let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Paul again speaks of living in the light of the daytime and not doing those things in the darkness where we think others do not see us. Short lesson today, but a few points we want to make. What do we take from the, today's lesson? Love God with all your soul and all your might and love your neighbor as yourself. And you will have fulfilled all the laws handed down to Moses. 
Each morning when we get up, we should start the day by asking ourselves, what can I do today to show my love for my God and for my neighbor? If you can't think of anything, then ask God to show you. <laughs> but be careful. You may not like what God shows you. Love God. Love your neighbor. Watch for opportunities. Have a blessed week and God bless you.